Hello everyone, this is MeatMo27 with a Trinity Deck Breakdown. Today we're going to be looking at Burning Abyss. So to get started, we have our main deck Burning Abyss monsters. I'm running all the unlimited ones except for Kagna. The reason why is because Kagna definitely has the worst effect, and you really don't want to be drawing into these Burning Abyss monsters mid-game. So I cut one just to make room for other stuff. Then we have Tour Guide. This is our best main deck enabler. You summon it, you can make Dante, you can make a Link, Wee Witch's Apprentice. A lot of different things you can do with it. Now, specifically a combo that comes up a lot early game is the three summon Beatrice combo. So you can use two or guys to summon Hallow Hallow. This lets you make Dante in two summons. You can use that third summon for Beatrice. There's also Song on Phoenix Rhino Warrior just to get flexibility to your tour guide summons, especially when you're linking because they'll link away. They'll float into either a search of a hand trap with Song Gone or they'll pitch any of your Burning Abyss monsters to Phoenix Rhino Warrior. Then we have Mathematician, essentially serves as slightly worse additional copies of Tour Guide. You can pitch Carbon then and banish it for Hunter Dragon. This lets us do that same climb into Beatrice and three summons. It also has the flexibility to pitch stuff like Dandelion and Paro Paro Serpris, which you really can't access with the rest of the deck. Then Armageddon Knight is the tertiary dump card. It can't enable your Dante Beatrice plays because it's not level 3, but it can still do things like pitch Shadal Dragon, pitch Mana Dragon Zerontron, or pitch Skarm to set up into that Beatrice play on the next turn, so it's definitely still worth running. Crane Crane gives us mid-game recovery, which is especially important when you want to be able to push into higher Link plays after you've been floating on a Dante for several turns. Then we have our Danger cards. These help us put board presence the level 3s help us make Dante or rank 3, and then later game they can help us make Lynx. And Thunderbird is particularly useful because it can really help beat over things that the deck might not otherwise be able to beat over. Phantom Sky Blaster is also an extremely good Link enabler, because if you have any other monster when you summon it, it then can make Boral Load or Boral Sword Dragon in 3 summons. For the spells, we've got Pot of Avarice. This is a really good card in deck that's going to be filling up your graveyard, so it's usually live by turn two or three, when in a lot of back row or less monster focused decks, it might not be live till turns four or five. Then we have Unexpected Die. This makes our Vanillas a little less uh, bricky in the deck. Then we have Foolish Burial. This is easily one of the best cards in the deck. You can pitch anything from your deck. Then I just run a couple of good stable traps that I would recommend you run in almost any deck. For traps, we've got Lost Mind and Breakthrough Skill. These do stuff in the graveyard, so if you do end up milling them with Dante, they'll be useful later. Fiend Griefing is something that's a bit unique to Burning Abyss. Not a lot of decks can run this. It's sort of like a second copy of Called to the Grave. It's a bit worse, but if you time it right, it can be very good, and can give additional disruption with the pitched BA from the deck. Then we have Dino Miscus and Ultimate Providence. These are good cards to dump excess Burning Abyss monsters or other things that want to be in graveyard from your hand, as well as proccing danger effects. Then we have four good staple traps, much like the spells, just things that I would recommend you play in almost any deck. For the Trinity, we've got Co-Forbidden Seer. Now this is easily the best Burning Abyss monster, and it's just mandatory for BA decks, because you really want to establish that Seer Dante loop, because that's what's going to bring you from that early game board state into a late game spam of Link monsters that will then let you grind into victory. Then we're in two extra tour guides, just because, as I said earlier, it's the best card in the deck. Uh, you want as many of this card as possible, and we run a second Mathematician, just because we can't run more Tour Guides, and this is the next best card after Tour Guide for enabling plays. For the extra step, we got Dante Pilgrim. He's the other half of the Co-Forbidden Pair of Seer. I run him as a float target for Beatrice, just because I wanted this to really showcase that Burning Abyss playstyle. I think he's definitely cuttable, because while he's good and hard to out, he is outable by things like Cyber Dragons or higher attack monsters. And you can float into something like, say, Virgil as well with Beatrice, and while it's not as good, it doesn't take that Coverbin slot, and you can spend it in the main deck on something else, like Solemn Strike or Pancratops or Danger Bigfoot. Then for our Xyz, we run Dante. Obviously, you have to run Dante. It's a Burning Abyss deck. He's the key card. We run Breaksword and Darius. These just help us out big monster threats. Deck might not otherwise be able to out. Then there's Beatrice. She's our main payoff for running Burning Abyss. Then for Lynx, we run Wee Witch. Easily one of the best Link monsters for any deck that runs Dark. It floats back into things like Tour Guide or Songon or what have you, and it's just really strong at helping you grind into those bigger Link plays by keeping your board state established and by keeping your hand full of those Link enablers. Then we're in the three Nightmares. No Link deck is complete. Without these cards, they just offer too much utility and flexibility. Then we're in both Boral, good Boral cards. Boral Sword and Boral Load Dragons. 
these are basically the deck's win cons, especially against decks where that are also grinding so you can't push through with something like Dante and win. These cards can really help you make that final damage push because they just have huge damage potential and board control potential. We have Space Insulator, this is mainly here so that we can turn tokens into something that can make Boral Load or Boral Sword. Lampholinkus is there so that we can step into something like Nightmare Unicorn or a rank 3 in not our extra monsters and without using a summon. And Guy Saber is the same kind of thing, except it's there to give us a beater without using any summons. Now, the side deck is mostly just suggestions, but I mostly want to talk about Rusty Bardish here. A lot of people run this card in Burning Abyss or similar decks. The reason why I chose not to run it is just because I think it requires a bit of a different build in the main deck that's a lot more focused on spamming dark monsters out, while the build that I went for is focused on getting that Beatrice out in the three summons. So while I don't think it's wrong the way I did it, or wrong in the Bardish build, they're just dif they're slightly different builds, so you want to run more enablers like Orcist cards or Kage Mucha Knight, or things like that that really help get you those dark monsters for Rusty Bardish. And now we'll see the deck in action.